all biblical scholars are familiar with the documentary hypothesis, or Wellhausen hypothesis, named for proponent Julius Wellhausen. The premise is that the books placed early in the Old Testament, the Torah, come from different writers, not one writer such as Moses. For various reasons, you won't hear about it if you sit in a pew during a church service on Sunday, but biblical scholars agree that the Old Testament consists of manuscripts by authors from different eras and regions. An anonymous editor at an unknown time combined different texts, making changes so inconsistencies are not too glaring. The editor who combines sources is called the redactor. We don't know exactly how or when or why the materials were woven together. Any theory probably oversimplifies what really happened, but we can recognize different origins of books that make up the Old Testament. One writer is known to scholars as E, since this writer refers to God as Elohim. Another writer is very concerned with priestly matters, so the work of this writer is called P. This priestly writer may have been the editor, leaving an amalgamation of four sources. The P author may have done this in the 6th century BC, or before Common Era, when the Babylonian exile began. In some places we can see how the editor did his work, like where the editor gives doublets two versions of a story. There are two stories of the creation. The P account is in the first chapter of Genesis. The Yahwist account is in the second chapter of Genesis. One more writer is identified as the Yahwist, since that writer uses Yahweh for God. J is used for that writer since Yahwist starts with J in the German language. German scholars led the field in the 19th century. The J source was the first source to be written, but it does not appear first in the Old Testament. It is a source for the second and third chapters of Genesis. The P source appears earlier in the first chapter of Genesis. J was written in, and based on oral traditions from, the southern part of the land, called Judah. This is an additional reason for calling it J. Another source is called D, the first letter of Deuteronomy. Laws in D differ from what is in Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. The redactor implies that Deuteronomy represents the second giving of laws, or the law, by Moses. One contradiction in laws had consequences in history. King Henry VIII of England thought he was allowed to marry his dead brother's wife due to Deuteronomy. But Leviticus says the opposite. If a man shall take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. They shall be childless. The king sought a divorce. The writer responsible for the d source was very prolific, producing not only much of Deuteronomy, but books ranging from Joshua to the second book of Kings. The Deuteronomistic history is made up of Joshua, Judges, first and second books of Samuel, first and second books of Kings. They cover ancient Israel between the entry to the land and the exile to Babylon. The style and themes in these books are reminiscent of, and dependent on, the religious views set forth in the d source behind the book of Deuteronomy. A passage in the second book of Kings describes a book of the law being discovered in the temple during the reign of King Josiah. This is around 621 BC. This book may be the d source. One theme of D is that sacrifices are to be made at Jerusalem's temple, not wherever Jews choose to make sacrifices. The traditions found in J, E, and P are not in the D source. The D writer did not know these three sources, but the redactor ends Deuteronomy with the P account of the death of Moses. In some places, especially involving the J and E materials, the interweaving is so complicated that we can't identify where one source ends and the other begins. Some scholars prefer to speak of the J-E source rather than J and E 
as separate sources. I highly recommend these books.